Welcome to Life in the UK Test.biz, where learning is fun. The Proms is an eight-week summer season of orchestral classical music that takes place in various venues, including the Royal Albert Hall in London. It has been organised by the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, since 1927. Henry Purcell, 1659-95 was the organist at Westminster Abbey. He wrote church music and operas. The German-born composer George Frederick Handel, 1695-1759, spent many years in the UK and became a British citizen in 1727. He wrote the water music for King George I and music for the Royal Fireworks for his son, George II. Handel also wrote an oratorio, Messiah, which is sung regularly by choirs, often at Easter time. Gustav Holz, 1874-1934, whose work includes the planets, a suite of pieces themed around the planets of the solar system. He adapted Jupiter, part of the planet suite, as the tune for I Vow to Thee My Country, a popular hymn in British churches. Sir Edward Elgar, 1857 1934, was born in Worcester, England. His best-known work is probably the Pomp and Circumstance Marches. March No. 1, Land of Hope and Glory, is usually played at the last night of the proms at the Royal Albert Hall. Rafe Vaughan Williams, 1872-1958, wrote music for orchestras and choirs. He was strongly influenced by traditional English folk music. Sir William Walton, 1902-83, wrote a wide range of music, from film scores to opera. He wrote marches for the coronations of King George V. I and Queen Elizabeth II but his best-known works are probably Facid, which became a ballet, and Balthazar's Feast, which is Benjamin Britten, 1913-76, is best known for his operas, which include Peter Grimes and Billy Budd. He also wrote A Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, which is based on a piece of music by Purcell and introduces the listener to the various different sections of an orchestra. He the Mercury Music Prize is awarded each September for the best album from the UK and Ireland. The Brit Awards is an annual event that gives awards in a range of categories, such as Best British Group and Best British Solo Artist. There are theatres in most towns and cities throughout the UK. Ranging from the large to the small, they are an important part of local communities and often show both professional and amateur productions. London's West End, also known as Theatre Land, is particularly well known. The Mouse Trap, a murder mystery play by Dame Agatha Christie, has been running in the West End since 1952 and has had the longest initial run of any show in history. There is also a strong tradition of musical theatre in the UK. In the 19th century, Gilbert and Sullivan wrote comic operas, often making fun of popular culture and politics. These operas include HMS Pinafore, The Pirates of Penzance and The Mikado. Gilbert and Sullivan's work is still often staged by professional and amateur groups. More recently, Andrew Lloyd Webber has written the music for shows which have been popular throughout the world, including, in collaboration with Tim Rice, Jesus Christ Superstar and Davita, and also Cats and the Fat. One British tradition is the pantomime. Many theatres produce a pantomime at Christmas time. They are based on fairy stories and are light-hearted plays with music and comedy, enjoyed by family audiences. One of the traditional characters is the Dame a woman played by a man. There is often also a pa The Edinburgh Festival takes place in Edinburgh, Scotland, every summer. It is a series of different arts and cultural festivals, with the biggest and most well-known being the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. The Fringe. The Fringe is a showcase of mainly theatre and comedy performances. It often shows the experiment. The Laurence Olivier Awards take place annually at different venues in London. There are a variety of categories, including Best Director, Best Actor and Best Actress. The awards are named after the British actor Sir Laurence Olivier, 
later Lord Olivier, who was best known for his roles in various Shakespeare plays. Many of the painters working in Britain in the 16th and 17th centuries were from abroad, for example, Hans Holbein and Sir Anthony Van Dyke. Works by British and international artists are displayed in galleries across the UK. Some of the most well-known galleries are the National Gallery, Tate Britain and Tate Modern in London, the National Museum in Cardiff, and the National Gallery of Scotland in Edinburgh. The Turner Prize was established in 1984 and celebrates contemporary art. It was named after Joseph Turner, for works are shortlisted every year and shown at Tate Britain before the winner is announced. The Turner Prize is recognised as one of the most prestigious visual art awards in Europe. Pre Thomas Gainsborough, 1727 88, was a portrait painter who often painted people in country or garden scenery. David Allen, 1744 96, was a Scottish painter who is best known for painting portraits. One of his most famous works is called The Origin of Painting. Joseph Turner, 1775-1851, was an influential landscape painter in a modern style. He is considered the artist who raised the profile of landscape painting. John Constable, 1776-1837, was a landscape painter most famous for his works of Devon Vale on the Suffolk-Essex border in the east of England. The Pre-Raphaelites were an important group of artists in the second half of the 19th century. They painted detailed pictures on religious or literary themes in bright colours. The group included Holman Hunt, Dan Gabriel Rossetti and Sir John Milley. Rate 140, Sir John Lavery, 1856-1941, was a very successful Northern Irish portrait painter. His work included painting the royal family. Henry Moore, 1898-1986, was an English sculptor and artist. He is best known for his large bronze abstract sculptures. John Petz, 1914-91, was a Welsh artist, best known for his engravings and stained glass. Lucian Freud, 1922-2011, was a German-born British artist. He is best known for his portraits. David Hockney, 1937, was an important contributor to the pop art movement of the 1960s and continues to be influ in the Middle Ages. Great cathedrals and churches were built, many of which still stand today. Examples are the cathedrals in Durham, Lincoln, Canterbury and Salisbury. The Scottish architect Robert Adam influenced the development of architecture in the UK, Europe and America. He designed the inside decoration as well as the building itself in great houses such as Dumfries House in Scotland. His ideas influenced architects in cities such as Bath, where the Royal Crescent was built. In the 19th century, the medieval Gothic style became popular again. As cities expanded, many great public buildings were built in this style. The Houses of Parliament and St Pancras Station were built at this time as were the town halls in cities such as Manchester and Sheffield. In the 20th century, Sir Edwin Lutyens had an influence throughout the British Empire. He designed New Delhi to be the seat of government in India. He was responsible for many war memorials throughout the world, including the Cenotaph in Whitehall. After the First World War, Sir Edwin Lutyens was responsible for many war memorials throughout the world including the Cenotaph in Whitehall. The Cenotaph is the site of the annual Remembrance Day service attended by the Queen, politicians and foreign ambassadors. Modern British architects including Sir Norman Foster, Lord, Richard, Rogers and Dame Zaha Hadid continue to work on major projects throughout the world as well as within the UK. He often said that a place had capabilities. Later. Jethro Jekyll often worked with Edwin Lutyens to design colourful gardens around the houses he designed. Gardens continue to be an important part of homes in the UK. The annual Chelsea Flower Show showcases garden design from Britain and around the world.
he often said that to place had capabilities. Later, Jeffrey Jekyll often worked with Edwin Luchens to design colorful gardens around the houses he designed. Gardens continue to be an important part of homes in the UK. The annual Chelsea Flower Show showcases garden design from Britain and around the world. Britain has produced many great designers, from Thomas Chippendale, who designed furniture in the 18th century, to Clarice Cliff, who designed Art Deco ceramics, to Sir Terence Conran, a 20th century interior designer. Leading fashion designers of recent years include Mary Quant, Alexander McQueen and Vivian Westwood. The UK has a prestigious literary history and tradition. Several British writers, including the novelist Sir William Golding, the poet Seamus Heaney, and the playwright Harold Pinter, have won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Other authors have become well known in popular fiction. Agatha Christie's detective stories are read all over the world and Ian Fleming's books introduce James Bond. In 2003, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien was voted the country's best loved novel. The Man Booker Prize for Fiction is awarded annually for the best fiction novel written by an author from the Commonwealth, Ireland or Zimbabwe. It has been awarded since 1968. Past winners include Ian McEwan, Hilary Mantle and Julian Barnes. Jane Austen, 1775-1817, was an English novelist. Her books include Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. Her novels are concerned with marriage and family relationships. Many have been made into television programs or films. Charles Dickens 1812-70, wrote a number of very famous novels, including Oliver Twist and Great Expectations. You will hear references in everyday talk to some of the characters in his books, such as Scrooge, a mean person, or Mr. Micawber, always Thomas Hardy, 1840-1928, was an author and poet. His best-known novels focus on rural society and include Far From the Madding Crowd and Jude the Obscure. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, 1859-1930, was a Scottish doctor and writer. He was best known for his stories about Sherlock Holmes, who was one of the first fictional detectives. Robert Louis Stevenson, 1850-94 wrote books which are still read by adults and children today. His most famous books include Treasure Island, Kidnapped and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Evelyn Waugh, 1903-66, wrote satirical novels, including Decline and Fall and Scoop. He is perhaps best known for Brideshead Revisited. Sir Kingsley Amis, 1922-95, was an English novelist and poet. He wrote more than 20 novels. The most well-known is Lucky Jim. Graham Greene, 1904-91, wrote novels often influenced by his religious beliefs, including The Heart of the Matter, The Honorary Consul, Brighton Rock and Their Man in Havana. J.K. Rowling, 1965, wrote the Harry Potter series of children's books, which have enjoyed huge international success. She now writes fiction for adults as well. The Anglo-Saxon poem Beowulf tells of its heroes' battles against monsters and is still translated into modern English poems which survive from the Middle Ages include Chaucer's Canterbury Tales and a poem called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, about one of the knights at the court of King Arthur. As well as plays, Shakespeare wrote many sonnets, poems which must be 14 lines long and some longer poems. As Protestant ideas spread, a number of poets wrote poems inspired by their religious views. One of these was John Milton, who wrote Paradise Lost. Other poets, including William Wordsworth, were inspired by nature. Sir Walter Scott wrote poems inspired by Scotland and the traditional stories and songs from the area on the borders of Scotland and England. He also wrote novels many of which were set in Scotland. William Wordsworth, 
1770-1850, The Daffodils, Tiger, Tiger, Burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Poetry was very popular in the 19th century, with poets such as William Blake, John Keats, Lord Byron, Percy Shelley, Alfred Lord Tennyson, and Robert and Elizabeth Browning. Robert Browning, 1812-89 Home Thoughts from Abroad, some famous lines include, O oh, to be in England now that April's there and Hover wakes in England seas, some morning, unaware, that the lowest boughs and the brush would chief round the elm, tree bowler in tiny leaf while the chaff Lord Byron, 1788, 1824, She walks in beauty, some famous lines include, She walks in beauty, like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies, all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. William Blake, 1757-1827, The Tiger, some famous lines include, Tiger, Tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Wilfred Owen, 1893-1918, Anthem for a Doomed Youth, some famous lines include, What passing bells for these who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns, only the stuttering rifles' rapid rattle can patter out their hasty orisons.